everybody. Welcome back to Clip It. This episode is so, so informative. This this young woman, she breaking barriers. She is definitely like a renowned worldwide celebrity hairstylist, runway artist. Um, she's my home home girl. She's from Philadelphia. And I'm telling you, I can't wait for you guys to hear her story. And we're going to have two episodes. We're going to have two episodes with her. So you do not want to miss either one of them. And with no further ado, I would like to introduce to you this phenomenal, groundbreaking artist in our industry, Kia Sterling. Hey, um, Kia. Welcome to okay. Clip It. Juanita, thank you so much for that awesome intro. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. You are magical, girl. I am so proud of you. Thank you so much for creating this platform you're and welcome. having me on. I'm just so honored. Thank you for being on this platform. I would like my audience to hear how you actually got started in the hair business. That's one question. And then how you broke those barriers to being a runway, renowned artist, all just worldwide. I mean, you have made, girl, just come on, let's just start telling us a, a little bit more about how you got started. Okay, well, <laughs> I got started being interested in hair when I was probably around nine years old. Okay. And, you know, I was around hair. I love beauty, I love fashion. So it piqued my interest initially then and then in high school, I got more curious and um, I always wanted to do something that was really creative because that's just like, I get that from like my dad's side. So I knew I wanted to do something creative. I didn't know if I wanted to become a dancer because I have a dance background okay. or hairstylist, but I was leaning more towards hair because I just, it was this thing. It was just like this fixation. I love beauty. I love fashion. And I look at hair as beauty and fashion. Like it's all under the same umbrella. So um, I did go to college. I'm a college dropout. <laughs> because I was bored out my mind. I was partying too much. Um, I was doing hair in my dorm. Trying okay. to make money. And I was like, I need to do this like for real, like real life. So after like two years of college, I dropped out, went home, told my parents, hey, I want to go to cosmetology school. I was so reluctant because everybody in my family is all about degrees and everybody has a degree. And I was just like, this is not for me. Like, right, right. I know what I want to do and this is not for me. Well, at least I thought I wanted, I thought I knew what I wanted to do. So I told my parents, they were like, well, why didn't you say this two years ago? I'm like, really? <laughs> You mean to tell me if I had said this, I would have just skipped college and went straight to cosmetology school. Right. So anyway, it was like, go ahead, find a school. I'll pay for it. So I went to cosmetology school and did extremely well, of course, because whenever you're doing something that you really love, you excel in it. Okay. So graduated from school. And then, you know, I worked at a lot of different salons in Philly. It was fun. I learned a lot of things. You know, I assisted. Um worked around some amazing hairstylists. And then about, you know, 15 years into it, I kind of was like, I love this, but something's missing. Right. I'm not sure what it is though. I didn't know, I wasn't feeling it anymore. And I was like, is it the hair? Is it, is it me? I don't know. I just didn't know what it was. So then I started thinking back to when I was a teenager, I used to take um, fashion magazines like Vogue, Bazaar, Harper's Bazaar, um, all the magazines, and I would cut out images from the magazines and I would paste them up on my walls all the way up to my ceiling. And I was, again, I was drawn to the hair, to the makeup, to the fashion. And my mom said, you know, you've always loved that since you were like a seven-year-old little girl. And I was like, I know, but I need to figure out how to incorporate that in what I'm doing because yeah. Working behind a chair is totally different. It is a lot of fun. You get to meet some awesome women. I mean, my clients are amazing because I still right. work behind a chair. But it was just something, it was something calling me. Okay. So I, hmm, let me figure out what to do. So around nine years ago, mm -hmm. I decided to 
I decided to try to build a portfolio okay. and did a lot of research on how to, you know, build a portfolio, how to start to network with other artists. I was working at a salon at the time. This was in like 2011. And the owner decided she wanted the staff to do an in-house photo shoot. Okay. So I was really excited because in really, this was like my first real photo shoot after like 20 years being in the industry. So I hadn't done a real official photo shoot until this time. So I did the photo shoot. I got a real model. I didn't get my cousin, my girlfriend, my next door neighbor, somebody cute walking down the street. Right. I had a client at the time who was a model in New York and she's from Philly and I hit her up and she said, hey, I'll do it for you. Let me know when. So she came back to Philly. I made some wigs for this shoot. And she killed it. It was okay. amazing, phenomenal. The hair was amazing. And I remember the owner of the salon saying, like, she, she kind of, I think she didn't think I had it in me. But when she saw it, she was like, wow. Like, I was excited because this was like my first photo shoot and it came out fairly well. You know, now that I look back on it, I see so many areas I could have worked on. But this was like my first official sh- photo shoot. So I was ready to like, just try my best to make it happen. And I remember working in that salon and, and not having the support from my coworkers. So I always tell people, you're gonna have people coming at you saying like, girl, you can't do that. Girl, you shouldn't do this. Why should you do this? Who do you think you are? And I knew what I wanted to do. I was like super confident, but there's always this little thing telling you, you can't do it but we can't listen to that. Right. We listen to our heart. Like I was really focused and I said, okay, this was pretty successful. I'm ready to start the branch out. So based off of that photo shoot is where like my, my, my interest really started to peak. Okay. I started a lot of research. I started networking. Um, I didn't even have any social media at the time. So I got a Facebook page because the owner of the salon where I was working said, in order for you to work here, you do have to have a Facebook page because she does a lot of um, communicating with her staff on Facebook. Okay. So I'm like forced to get social media because I didn't want it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I got this Facebook page and I just was like, all right, I'm gonna start networking. I'm just gonna start jumping in photographers DMs introducing myself, introducing my work. And you know, I got a lot of people who didn't pay me any attention, but I got mm-hmm. a lot of people who did. So okay. started shooting. Um, I would say I was like a mad woman when it came to shooting. I was shooting because I knew at that time, I knew that I needed to build a portfolio and I needed to build it fast because I think I was maybe like 42 years old at that time. Okay. And I knew Time is ticking. Right. Time is not really on my side right now because I'm not 27. Right. So I had a lot of things to accomplish in like the, the next like three or four years. So I just started reaching out to photographers. They were like interested in shooting with me locally okay. and makeup artists, other models. That's when Model Mayhem was really popular. I don't know if you remember that. But Model Mayhem was really popular. That was a site where um, photographers, makeup artists, hairstylists, models, um, fashion stylists would network. So it was sort of like Instagram or Facebook for the creatives. And I just started building from there and I was shooting average like three times a week. Okay. That's awesome. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. I mean, for you to even, you had that vision back when you were like seven years old, because when you put those magazines and all that stuff up to the ceiling in your room, you actually made it into a lot of the magazines that you just mentioned. Yeah. As, yeah. as a platform artist, as a world-renowned artist, um, an educator, um, Kia, you have inspired and taught so many people and you are so positive, you're a positive soul and it, it just comes through everything that you do. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm telling you, um, you know, you say it's a small world. We're from Philadelphia. We actually was in the same area working and I just, I'm grateful to finally meet you, you know. Um, I know. 
can you tell tell the audience um some of the magazines that you had the privilege of being in? I know it's Cosmopolitan, Zing. Mm -hmm. Um, Zing. I know it goes Allure. Allure. Good, huh? Yeah, Allure. Allure. In Cosmopolitan, um, Zinc. Oh my God, it's hundreds. hundreds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundreds. it was. It was like a dream come true, and even for me, I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Wow, this is really happening." I, I've been featured in Italian Vogue, their Photo Vogue on their site, and um, these were things that I just didn't think would ever come true. Okay. And when it happened, I was like, "This is really possible." Yeah. You know, we really have to manifest things. I'm, I'm a big believer in manifesting. I mean, negativity can seep in, but we have to see it. Like as if yes. it's, all, you know, and I started to see myself doing the, these things. And yes. I said, this is possible. First I had to see it. And then yes. I had to speak it and manifest it. And you told me you wrote it down as well. Yep. I wrote it down. You I wrote, wrote it down. You got to make it plain. You got to make it clear. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, kids. So being a brand right now, because you are a big brand, um, your wigs, can you tell us a little bit about your brand of wigs and maybe how that even came about? Yeah, that, okay. So uh, about four years ago, you know, I love, I'm like a chameleon. I love change. I love to change my hair. Again, I think hair is fashion. Yes. I don't as seriously unless it's natural hair which I do take seriously because we need to make sure our, our natural hair is healthy and vibrant and all those good things. But when, when it comes to wigs, it's all fun. So I was always changing my hair, doing something different. And people were always complimenting me. They're like, oh my God, I love your hair. And they were like, I want that. What is that? I, what kind of hair is that? I want that. I want you to make a wig like that for me. So every time I would change my hair, someone would say, I really want that. So- okay. One day I said, you know what? I need to make a wig collection based off of what I really like. So I didn't base it off of like, you know, people who like um, uh, feather curls or beach waves because that's not really my style. Although okay. I love, and I don't want to say too much because you might see me next week with some beach waves. I'm just, <laughs> it's all about the mood. You know, I don't know what I might want to look like in 10 days. Right. But for now, you know, everything is like really natural. So I created a wig collection called the Melanin Collection. And at that time, there were six wigs. Now there are nine wigs that I added to the collection. And it's just um, like braids, locks, um, very coily textures, um, afro textures, just really pretty hair that some people just really like to look at. They like to touch it. You know what I mean, but yes, <laughs> but because people like to chase me down the street. Can I touch your hair? And I'm like, no, but <laughs> hey, hands off. You can look at it though. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, you know, people, people, people were attracted to it. So I created the Melanin Collection in 2000, I think 16, 17, and it's been super successful. I love it. Awesome. And I'm always building and adding on it. So, yes, yes. Also, you're a part of a team, a styling team that's called the Underground. The Beauty Underground. The Beauty Underground. Mm -hmm. um, can, you, can you let me know or let the audience know how did they sort you out? How did that all occur? Because that's like the beauty. Uh, is that the Beauty Week team or what team is this that you want? Because you know, this is um, the Beauty Underground is an international hairstyling team that I'm on. Um, okay. They actually seek me out. Um, the founder, there are three founders, but the the, the main feature founder, um, he was on Sheer Genius years ago, back in like 2006, I think. And his name is Charlie Price. Okay. And I was obsessed with him. I was like, I need to meet him. He's amazing. And that's I Bravo, need, right? I, I need to connect with him because he was such a character on the show and an amazing stylist. So years forward, once we have social media, I was able to like follow him on Instagram, follow him on um, uh, Facebook. And, you know, I used to always comment on his work, comment on his images. And one day when I commented, he went to my Facebook page and he started looking through my work okay. and he said, hey, is this all your work? And I'm like, yes. 
And he's like, okay, send me your website. So I sent him my website and he came back and he said, oh my God, your work is phenomenal. And we need to connect. We need to collaborate. We need to do this and this and that. And I'm like, what? Am I talking to the Charlie Price? Like, is this real? <laughs> wow. So I'm like, crazy. So he invited me to um, do a segment at Naha, which is the North American Hairstyling Awards, which is like the Oscar for hairstylists. So the Beauty Underground was doing a um, hair segment for the show. And he invited me on the team to do that segment. And that was so much fun. Oh my God, we had uh, we had some amazing looks that, um, that day. Okay. And then um, they also do fashion week. So I was kind of like a guest artist at that time. So he invited me to do New York fashion week. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I went to be a guest artist for New York fashion week and he loved my work so much. He's like, I'm officially putting you on the team. And I'm like, oh my awesome. God, you know this? Like, awesome. this is like a dream come true. I have always wanted to like work with him. And the team has some amazing artists. Everybody is super creative, super dope. Um, just really, really, really good people. So I had an opportunity to work with a lot of people, travel, do a lot of shows. Just really good, good energy. All right. You did some TV work too as well, correct? Yeah, I've done like, um, I worked with um, Diane Guerra. You guys remember her from Orange is the New Black? Yes. Yeah, she's amazing. I was working with her a lot in like 2016. Um, and um, I did like an ad campaign for Maybelline. Um, let me see what Adeline. else. Ad campaign for Kenra, for Avline, for Avline. That was fun. We did that in LA. Um, so yeah, some doors have opened. Yes. I'm very, very a blessed. A lot very, of Because yeah. people were telling me, you can't do this. Like, so the fact that I'm doing it. Yes, you are. It's making, I tell people all the time, you have to believe you can't, you can't listen to the naysayers mm -hmm. because there's always people that's going to tell you you're going to fail. And the more you, the more you take that energy in, the more you start to believe it. We yes. really see what we hear, what we see, we become that. And I had to literally like separate myself from that because the negative noise will just drown out everything positive that you want to do. And, and, and I was so laser focused that I was just like, I have to like, just not hear this. I have to block it, you know? So, and everything wasn't easy. Trust me. Everything wasn't easy. I've had doors slammed in my face. I've had people tell me no, but my big thing is networking because networking is so vital to whatever you do, not even in just this industry, any industry, you know, a lot of times we're like super shy or sometimes we as artists or we as people think that we're better and mm -hmm. I'm reaching out to him or I'm not reaching out to this person. They should be reaching out to me when in reality, they have what you want. Closed mouths don't get fed. So Amen. if you don't open your mouth, they don't know you even exist. Sometimes you have to put yourself right in that person's face for them to see you. You know, and I think a lot of times, um, sometimes I know a lot of really, really talented artists that are not successful because of that. Okay. We always hold us back. And a lot of times it's our pride. Okay. Okay. You know, our pride. Now, do you find that, you know, you being from Philadelphia, what, what part of Philadelphia are you from? Um, Mount Airy. Oh, okay. I'm from Mount Airy <laughs> too. That's my world. Uh, a lot in common. Yes, yes. All my life. <laughs> so yeah, my parents still live in Mount Airy. Okay. Mine do too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, just making your waves and moves and, and climbing the ladder of success. I mean, did you find it difficult? Um, because it's not a lot of a lot of people with your stamina. Um From Philadelphia. I have to say that because you're very unique in your own way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think you've done a lot of things that I think any hairstylist would want to do. Because it's not like you're you're like doing everything. You're doing magazines. Yeah. You're, huh? I'm all over the place. <laughs> yes. And you have so much positive energy. Um, 
So with the high fashion and like coloring and all that, do you do everything prior to the shows? Well, it depends. Um, it depends on like, for instance, if there are wigs involved and we need to color wigs, we would color the wigs probably, usually when we do big shows like that, it's a two day process. Okay. So the first day we'll do like, we'll make the wigs, we'll color the wigs, we'll cut and style the wig. And then the second day we'll put the wigs on the models. Okay. Or maybe the first day we'll just color the wigs and make the wigs. And then the next day we'll put, uh, we'll cut and style the wigs on the, on the models. Okay. So it kind of depends on um, what's going on. If it's just hairstyling only, that's done the day of the show, like a couple hours prior to showtime. Okay. But if we have a, a situation where we're working with wigs, which some shows we are, a lot of wig work and color would need to be done prior because that takes hours. Awesome. You know, so we may start at 9 a.m. doing wig work and color work and not end until maybe 5 or 6 p.m. and then come back the next day and do the cutting and the styling on the model's head. So that way, um, they're ready for show. Ready for the show. <laughs> okay. Mm. And you know, being behind the scenes of so many fashion shows and like the the work and the team and the effort. I mean, do you miss that right now? I mean, because I I think the other day you talked to me about a virtual show, and you told me about your feelings about it and. It's you know, far as with the COVID, and you're like, oh God, I've missed the whole. Yeah, you know, hustle and bustle. Yeah. So how is that changing? Oh You're so God. positive. So you'll definitely make anything work. Yeah. But you did kind of mention that it's kind of a drag to you. Yeah. Well, um, I'm the lead hairstylist of Philadelphia Fashion Week. For those who did not know that Philly has a fashion week, but we do. And it's like really, it's really big now. It's been around for over 10 years. Um, and I'm the lead stylist. So we had a virtual filming. I'm sorry, we had our filming last week for the virtual show, which is next week. Okay. Um, normally I work with a team of 50 hairstylists. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are from Philly. Some are from New York, some are from DC. Some are actually from LA, some are from Chicago, Alabama. I mean, I have stylists from all over the place. They wow. come. I'm so honored that they want to work with me and they, they fly in and we create the hair for fashion week and it's usually um, five days. Okay. But because of COVID, I was only allowed to bring in 10 artists. And normally it's about 200 models that walk throughout the week. Mm -hmm. We only had 25. Okay. So it shows you how small the show was compared to what it normally is. And um, so we did the hair and makeup last weekend. The show will air next week. I'm not sure of the date, but um, I will be posting that on my stories. So if you guys follow my Instagram, I always post stuff to my store. I'm like a really big story poster. So um, yes, I'm looking forward to it. But it was it was really cool. Okay. But I miss that energy from all yes. my teams. My team, I am so blessed. I work with some of the most amazing hairstylists from the area. And I miss them so much. Oh. Like 50 people... And now 10 people. Like, so the energy was different. We had fun though. I mean, we made it work. We made it work, but it was it was very different. Very, very different. Okay. Even the style was like, oh my God, I'm so used to all the hustle and bustle. And it was so, it was like the easiest show we have ever, ever done. Even the hair was simplified because wow. usually we do some like super creative things and like some really, you know, depending on the designer, like really edgy things. We were not able to create that because we were on a time restraint. We had three hours to be in and out because of COVID, you know, they didn't want us right. hanging around much. Right. So the hairstyles were simplified, but gorgeous. The hair was amazing. It was amazing. Mm. Yeah. Now, is it a particular um, method to the madness? Like, do you guys, can you just go in and do you direct the other stylists? Like, how is it done? Like, it's a so, team effort, yeah. but is it a particular way like far as, okay, we need the hairstyle like this for this scene and that scene. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about how that's done with a whole team behind the scenes? 
Yeah. So basically the way it works is that the lead hairstylist for any show, not just this show, but any show around the world, the lead is responsible for connecting with the designer. They call it a hair test. Okay. So the hairstylists and the makeup artists who are the leads of the show connect with the designers and create the look. Okay. Designers once. Once the look is created, now we have to make sure it's executed properly by our team. So we come up with the look. We have a um, demo. We do a demo for our team to show what the look is, how it should be executed, what products we should be using, and what, what um, tools okay. that are execute this look and then once we demo the look the stylists now know how to do it and they can execute the look so that's pretty awesome. much it. and then awesome. I'm, so I'm i'm the i'm the lead and then i have three co-leads that help we all help each other to bring this look to life okay so it's a big production <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure yeah but it's I live for it. I live for runway. I live for session work. I live for photo shoots. Like I live for it. And my clients are so cool. They like follow on my social media and they're like, girl, I love it. You are doing, I love it. I love it. I it. Like, so I'm really fortunate and blessed to be able to get, have the best of both worlds because I can still, my clients are so dope. I can still sit with my clients in the salon, do their hair network with them, find out about their babies and their husbands and all, you know, regular life right, stuff. Right, right. Still get a chance to jump on a plane and go to, you know, London and do hair. So it's it's pretty cool. And awesome. I have a strong support system, my family and my clients, which I wouldn't be here without them. They they cheer me on. They like, go King. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, girl. <laughs> I'm, me. I'm cheering you on because you are phenomenal. You, you have stepped into, you have definitely um, reinvented yourself over and over again. Like you, yeah. and you're getting better. It's like moving forward, doing so yeah. much more to advance yourself. And I mean, just the other day you said, you know, it doesn't matter how old you get or how old you are, just start. And so you're putting a lot of positivity into generations of hairstyles. Let me ask you a question. Um, because you're the lead hairstylist and you can invite other stylists, you're opening the door for a lot of younger African-American stylists. Is that true as well? Yes. Okay. So I started working New York Fashion Week, which was, which was my first fashion week before even Philly Fashion Week back in 2011. Um, once I got my foot in the door, you know, I'm keeping my ear to the streets in New York to find out what's what, who's what. And, you know, leads were asking me like, hey, do you know any other stylists? And I'm like, of course I do. I know plenty. I got you. So I started inviting my, some of my, some of my team from Philly to come to New York um, just for, so they can have the opportunity to work outside of what they normally would do. You know, they can put that on their resume. Yes. So, yeah, we have, once we open that door, somebody opened it for me, then I have to bring somebody in behind me. That's just how it works. Yes. We can continually all grow if we continue to keep that door open. We can't close it. A lot of us like to close it, but closed hands don't get fed. Closed <laughs> mouths don't get fed. What is that saying? Closed fists don't get blessed or whatever. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say. Yes. But we keep it moving and keep sharing, you know? It's, it's very important to me to share. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, I think that you have definitely um, been living your dream, like you said. Yeah. You are I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. Yes, you're blessed and highly mm -hmm. favored. And yes. you are helping other people um, yeah. live their dreams as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I want to thank Kia for our first episode all of her information is going to be down in the caption. Anything that you want to know, you can reach out to her Instagram page. I mean, this woman got so much stuff <laughs> that you just want to know everything it is about her and how phenomenal she is and how she just creates things and mm -hmm. motivates people. So this mm -hmm. is part of our first segment. We're going to be right back with our second segment with Kia Sterling. 